Breaking news, my wonderful people. Beware of the dangerous narratives regularly peddled by one Nigeria fifth columnist, uh, Abi uh, uh, columnist against Namde Kano IPOB and the Biafran restoration struggle. This one is coming from the office of Emma Powerful, the IPOB uh, chief uh, spokesperson, where they represent IPOB for anything that got to do with the uh, media matter and other etc etc so my wonderful people my viewers and subscribers good morning to you all and welcome you to this uh, very morning of okute daily talk broadcast or you can call it toko toko because without talk how person want to take uh, take care of his family and himself so now what will they do so we will take this one take the manage life because uh, hey they say life no get duplicated anybody where that you now in lose so my wonderful people viewers and subscribers so if you never subscribe i beg you try to do that as soon as possible make sure you share this message let it go viral because i pop biafra uh Nam the Kano, all the lawyers all the legal team they don't gather together to do what to reply outside the kubo because this news oh now the bone news now you will carry on because this man he don't shit for order hey on on and she i hear me now after the Kuban on Anti Nerota, even Maso don't reply them. Eh? APC don't reply uh, as the Kubo, PDP, Labour Party, even uh, AAC, Webby, Omo Elesore, Aladomo Elesore, don't also reply as the Kubo. You want to bring down the entire nation, Webby, the Southeast, simply because you are looking for cheap appointment or you are looking for oil pipeline uh, contract that is being given to Tomopolo, uh, popular known as uh, Tompolo. Anyway, sha, whichever way it is, so my dear brothers and sisters, my viewers, me gonna do what? Me gonna use this one to step down. I'll be right back. It is no longer a new trend to stumble across several defaming narratives flooding over many social media and the print media platforms, written and spread by infiltrators. Fifth col uh, columnist, one Nigeria apologist, in order to plant seeds of discord mistrust and blackmail among Biafran sympathizers and lovers of freedom. The heavy state-sponsored campaign of blackmails and propaganda stated by the Buhari-led government against Namde Kano and the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, has been handed over to the new government of uh, Ahmed Tunumbu. The new administration in Nigeria has unabatedly shown from every indication their interest on some moves deployed by the former administration against IPOB. Lately, superior narratives are flooding the internet, targeted at uh, discrediting IPOB and her call for referendum as inconsequential, unachievable, and unconstitutional. These jones are as well uh, are as well receiving wide publicity at some quarters, as orchestrated by the one Nigeria loyalist. And the political psychophants who are using IPOB, Mazen and the Kano, Biafra's uh, struggle, and the uh, ibophobic sentiments to decoy to, to seek for political positions in the new government. Administration in Nigeria, sadly enough, these uh, stomach infrastructural uh, individuals continue to stand with the oppressors of the people as political loyalists, Trojan horses, and political errand boys in perpetuating the sufferings of the masses. In Nigeria, that is what President Dekano is fighting about. In their bid to remain relevant before the new government at the center, they remain hell bent on weaponizing the Biafran cause championed by IPOP to incite anti IPOP sentiment in the government. They engage in dishing out unfounded lies against the sanctity of the Biafran cause. Unfortunately, these hypocrites who serve as middlemen in peddling lies and propaganda for their paymasters clearly understand the effect the massive voices calling for the release of Mazenam de Kano, the IPOB leader. Portrays to the new government, alas, their renewed campaign of car money against the IPOB leader who is illegally detained currently in the dungeon of the Nigerian Department of State Service, DSS. On this note, the Biafrans and the general public are hereby advised to, dis to decipher these callous sentiments spread by infiltrators and agents of politicians who pretend to share with the sufferings of the masses. The days of disease are over. The people are with IPOB and the people are IPOB. Beware and avoid these 
and a blast of false claims against hip hop in general. No amount of blackmail, lies, and propaganda against Mazen Nam the Kano, hip hop, Eastern Security Network, ESN, or the Biafra struggle can stop the release of our leader, Mazen Nam the Kano, from DSS custody or discredit the call for referendum for Biafra exit from the so called Nigeria. The new administration should urgently heed to the calls made by various well meaning individuals, groups, and organizations and release Mazen Nam the Kano so he can have his deteriorating health treated. All lies leveled against IPOP, ESN, and the Biafra cause are dead on arrival. They cannot stop the resolve of the Biafra people because it is absolute. This message is written by Kelechi Chukweze Augustine and it was edited by Oga C.S. Madhuabuchi for the Family Press Writers International. And this message is read by Amandia Neze from Okute Daily Talk Platform. Another situation we have in hand here. After the Kobo visits uh, Tunumbu, as Nam the Kano and says Nam the Kano supported inside protests, the reason him is rewarding criminality, which is not, which is a lie. After the Kobo, a Niger militant uh, leader says the reason Nam the Kano, leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOP, will amount to rewarding criminality as he supported the inside protest. Who says so? His release will fail impunity during NSAS. Nam the Khan was walking free. What did he do, according to Azari Dokubo? And according to him again, he said, the reason Nam the Khan is rewarding criminality and rewarding, uh, rewarding gruesome murder of innocent people, he should face the law for the actions and the instigations he carried. He has carried out, he added. Azari Dokubo added. The ex militant made this statement while speaking with journalists. When he visited President Bola Tunumbu at the presidential villa on Friday, just to be relevant on the uh, on, on his pursuit to become relevant in this new administration, Mr. Kano had remained in illegal detention despite court orders discharging and acquitting him after he was abducted by the President Muhammadu Buhari regime in Kenya and smuggled into Nigeria in 2021. Contrary to Mr. Dokubo's claim that Mazen Kano fled answers. The historic nationwide protest against police brutality and extrajudicial killings perpetrated by the special anti robbery squad of the Nigerian police was championed by the Nigerian youth. Not Mazen Nam Dekano. Nobody is even the head of this uh, NSAS. But I, I, I was surprised to hear that uh, this uh, so called Atari Dokobo, the 70 year old man, attribute what happened 2020 on NSAS to Mazen Nam Dekano. Can't, can't you see it? You want to be relevant and you want them to pay you a huge amount of money because I'm very, very sure that that broadcast is a paid broadcast for you to rubbish the name of Mazen Nam Dekano and the Biafran struggle. But let me tell you the simple truth. Asari Dokobo, the 70 years old man. My dear, go and sleep. Just go and take your medicine and sleep because in your nature, you can go. Even your own people disowned you because of the simple statement you made at the national level. The protesters were destabilized uh, as state sponsor talks unleashed mayhem on protesters under the supervision of the Nigerian police. In October of 2020, the Nigerian army opened live rounds of ammunition on protecting youth at Lake Togate, killing many and injuring many. A judicial panel set by Lagos State to investigate the Lake massacre indicted the Nigerian army for using force on protesters, recommending the dismissal of officers who participated in the massacre and compensation of victims of the massacre. But the recommendations of the panel were ignored by both the Lagos State and the Buhari uh, regime, denying the October 2020 uh, massacre and allowing the perpetrators to walk free. I was poisoned that the PDP secretary, my liver kidney shut down, according to Yesom Wike, the former governor of River State. Former governor Yesom Wike of River State on Sunday disclosed that he was poisoned at the secretary of the People's Democratic Party in 2018. We can say the poison affected his liver and kidneys, adding that it almost killed him, but for God's intervention, everything God's intervention. They never give you better poison now. Nah? What they give you is just, uh, or maybe you drink something and something choke you. Because you have created a lot of enemies, that is why you think somebody poisoned you. It's alright, let us proceed. He disclosed this during a special Thanksgiving service organized by his family at the St. Peter's Denare Lumopolicum, Obiakpo, areas uh, of the state. 
The former governor said he was flown to Beirut at midnight, where doctors informed him that his liver and kidneys were gone. According to Wiki, after attending to him, the doctors informed him that the organs were working again. Mao. <laughs> He said the doctor discharged him after about a week and asked him to return home, noting that he altered his uh, itinerary during the campaign for his second time. The former governor said everybody became a suspect and he decided that he would not enter any party leader's home during the course of his campaign. Now, that is how he almost died of poisoning. We can say God was in charge. Everybody who knew how we came to power in 2015 knew it was a turbulent. But God saw us through. When you are in office, many people think things are going well with you. Nobody wants to find out the problems you are facing as a human being or as a leader. In December of 2018, it was the day my former chief of staff was going to have Thanksgiving. I was to attend that Thanksgiving from that Sunday on. I never came down from my room. It was bad. But... Those who attended the January uh, 1st state banquet of 2019, we know that I never spoke that day. I just sat down there and told the deputy governor to speak on my behalf. I thought it was over. I didn't know I had been present at our party secretariat. The doctors, after some treatment, returned and told me my organs have started working again. It's better that organ never work again, Seth. It's better it's never work again because... You are just, you are just, I don't know what, I don't know the name I will use to qualify you, but whichever it is, you are a movie man. Just, you know, my husband never influenced my decision. Just his book at Chua, break silence, medicine after death. We know now, continue. Just his Zene book at Chua, wife of Adamu book at Chua, senator who represented book about you not in the night assembly, has stated that nobody influenced her judicial decisions, according to the wife of uh, uh, Adamu. Nigeria report that the retired AP course president was reacting to comments made by her husband that he used his position to ask favor for his colleagues from his wife at the tribunal. Recall that the book actually had revealed he often influenced the decision of his wife, a former president of the Court of Appeal, the name book actually, while she was in office. The former uh, Bauchi senator made this known last Saturday, while speaking during the Senate valedictory season on the floor of the Red Chamber. He said, particularly my wife, whose freedom and independence I encroached upon while she was in office, and she has been very tolerant and accepted my encroachment and extended her help to my colleagues. The immediate past Senate President Ahmed Lawan, who presided over the valedictory season, interrupted the Bauchi senator before he spoke further. However, Bukachua's comments elicited outrage from a cross section of Nigeria on and off the social media, which will listen. Abakoba, former president of the Nigerian Bar Association, calling for the arrest of the former lawmaker. But in a statement on Sunday, Justice Bukachua said such insinuations were far from the truth. Medicine after death, as I said earlier. She said, My attention has been drawn to the trending video of what was said by my husband, Senator Adamo M. Bukachowa, I want to state categorically that I never at any time compromised my oath of office to favor any part who appeared before me through, throughout my judicial career, spanning 40 years of service to my country. Maun Dori Dori. My decisions were always based on the facts, the law, and in accordance with my conscience and oath of office. Also, as president of the Court of Appeal, my fellow justices of the court can attest to the fact that I never interfered with the independence of any of the justices of the court in the discharge of their judicial functions. But Ulisa Abakoba, the then former uh, NBA, Nigerian Bar Association uh, president, made it categorically clear that he lost three uh, cases, which he, uh, he know that he won it outrightly simply because of what just happened today. Simply because of this uh, open day confession of how your husband keep on uh, encroaching and uh, asking for help in favor of his colleagues, even when the case is against them. 
Meanwhile, in an interview with BBC Hausa, Senator Bukachu has said his words were misrepresented. I beg you, make a hear word. He also added that the former uh, president of the Senate, Ahmed Lawa, interrupted him while he was explaining. Well, I was not even allowed to finish. I just started with some words like thanking her, saying she was patient with me as she was a legal practitioner and I am a politician. Mao, yeah? people that will never, they will never, ever, posterity will judge all of you. I want to elaborate on the specific nature of the help she provided. As there, as there exists a wide range of support that professionals in various fields, such as legal practitioners, doctors or engineers, can offer in their respective roles. Know that uh, this assistance does not involve any illegal or unethical activities. In my personal relationship with her, I have never imposed upon her professional uh, autonomy or attempted to influence her judgment in handling cases or running her office. Such matters are not even discussed in our home, he said. Mao Naba. Government, they don't abd abduct a chief imam in Ondo community. I thought it's only Christian they keep on abducting and killings. Chief imam now is involved. The chief imam of Uso community in our local government area of Ondo state, Al Haji Ibrahim Uyin Lade, has been abducted. He was kidnapped on Sunday evening by unknown government. The chief imam was abducted while working on his farm at Asolo Camp within the community. According to a family source, the kidnappers, the kidnappers contacted the victim family shortly after the incident but have not yet demanded a ransom. The source, which declared the enormity, disclosed that the family was not contacted shortly after the kidnapping, they kidnapped him. They told the family that he was with them, but they, de they didn't demand any ransom yet. The incident has been reported to the Uso Police Division, and the police and the vigilante groups are currently searching for the victim in the bush. The DSP Fumilayo Odunlami, the police and public relations officers, confirmed the incident. She said, at around 6 p.m. on Saturday, a report was made at Uso Divisional Headquarters that the chief imam of the Uso went to his farm in the morning and did not return home at evening. He was later traced to the farm by his people who saw his phone and his uh, vehicle intact but couldn't find the man. The DBO and his men with the local vigilante are currently in the bush to trace and rescue the kidnapped imam. Married man, Don Payo, where did they do after the reggae play the booze with a mother of two? This is painful. A married man, I don't know with this this mother of two whether is a is a is a married or just a single mother of two. But whichever way it is, let us see how the thing happens. All in Imo State, where a married man, Chikwado Obiyo, had reportedly passed on after a knocking romp with his uh, lover, simply identified as Chedema. This news is supposed to be uh, entertainment news, but let me brought it to notice. This one is a warning to all uh, married men out there. Know what you take and know when to take it because all this issue of uh, buying on the process of uh, doing a megrimo, my dear, it don't become too much you. These days, all the time, the only man keep buying, keep buying, keep buying. What happened to the women? Because the women go there with their heart and mind, but look at the married man you want to go to do a Samaritan uh, run, runs out there. You will take everything that that is that is not even a, you don't even know whether your body system su uh, support that or not. You keep take a better shape. You take a tramadol. You take a alamo. You take a labo. You take a idiaraba. You take everything, and at the end of the day, all the whole thing will jump packed, and your heart uh, become uh, so uh, 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 enamored to be pumping, and that is what will lead to the, the to the passing away of that very particular person. Well, may we never see such again in our time again. The deceased heard from Obazu Mbiri Autonomous Community in Mbitori local government area of Imo State. After the knocking room, Ubiyo, a father of four, passed on, but he's a married robber, lover. Oh, this one is married also. From River State, slipped into a coma and was rushed to a hospital in the area. We will find out what, what really happened. According to information obtained by Daily Post, the body of the father of four has been deposited in a morgue. 
The deceased and his married lover lodged at the guest house in the neighborhood. The source for that told our correspondent that Chedema, a mother of two, resides with her husband as Umuchoke Obazo, where they rented an apartment. Imagine a married woman with a married man. The question balance is the not balance, my dear. A married man should go and look for what? And look for anyway, it is not a, it is not encouraging, I beg. It is not encouraging, I beg. A married man should go and look for his wife. <laughs> When contacted Holy Henry Okoye, the state police spokesperson said he was yet to be briefed on the said incident. We are moving forward, my wonderful people. River say police arrest woman who for stabbing a 12-year-old girl. What could be her offense? I don't know, but let us see. River State Police Command on Saturday arrested a woman identified as a big girl for stabbing a 12-year-old girl. The suspect left the knife on the girl's body in the incident, which occurred at uh, Rumodora in Obiapo, local government area of River State. The teenager, Olu Ebube, lives in the same building with a 30-year-old woman who acted excessively over a simple matter. Wow! What a bad heart! The sister, Oluchi, told the reporters that the victim was stabbed after she hit the woman with the water in their compound. Oluchi recalled that Olebube was washing plates outside the apartment when the woman stepped out to fetch water. My sister unknowingly entered the corridor with the pot and ran into the woman. Both of them fell and she bathed my sister. Other neighbors started begging the woman that it was a mistake, but the woman refused. Oluchi said the woman later ordered Olebube to sweep the spilled water why she continued fetching water. As my sister was about sweeping, sweeping, she, Abigail, came out with a knife and stabbed, uh, stabbed her. The head of the knife broke and the knife stayed in my sister's body. The police were called to the scene, but the suspect entered her room and tried to elope through the back door, but was eventually caught. The police public relations officer Grace Irene Jikoko confirmed the doctors uh, had removed the knife from the teen's body, adding that Abigail would be prosecuted according to the law. According to the law. Terrorists kill one and abduct six in Southern Kaduna again. <laughs> uh, the new gov uh, governor of Kaduna State, are you, are you, anyway, she is Muslim, Muslim ticket there, and uh, Erufai have made it clear. That, uh, that it is for a purpose. It is them versus us. So that is the way it, uh, it had to be. Terrorists attack the Ongwan Maji community in the new Millennium City suburb of Kaduna on Friday night, killed one person and abducted six others. The resident in the area, Jonathan James, Christian Nittis, said the terrorists arrived in the area around 9 10 p.m. and targeted a house close to Chaha Eye Hospital where they abducted a housewife and her house help. The bandits also attacked another house on the same street, kidnapping four more persons. An eyewitness revealed that two other uh, people who were outside their house were also abducted, but they managed to escape while being taken away through a stream at the back of the community. The imam of the community who escaped uh, miraculously said, he had not returned home after leading the Isha Isha I prayer, typically performed around 8 p.m. when the kidnappers arrived. I was taken in front of the mosque, and when they broke into two other houses and took six people, while they were breaking into second house, myself, another neighbor, and a woman with her house help, kidnapped from the first house, were asked to lie down on the back floor over there. The Imam explained. After the bandits broke into second house and took four people, there were eight of us, and then they started leading us out of the community. When we